Well, here we are in the tomb of the prophets, just on the Mount of Olives. And this fine gentleman here is the one in charge. And he's going to give us an explanation of the tomb layout down here. Now, this is the uh, drawing of the cave here. So we come down the steps. We are standing in this round spot. So two circles in the cave. First one contains the tombs around. The second circle, a corridor, right? All together in the cave, 15 tombs, the prophets and their followers. Now, the prophets are the last three Jewish prophets from the second temple period or 500 before Jesus, Haggai, Malachi, Zechariah. Two of them buried in the center, in that room, Haggai, Malachi. The half circle that side, the followers, Haggai, Malachi. And the other half, Zechariah, his followers. Now, how do we know the tomb of Zechariah? He's buried with his followers, not in a separate room. All the followers' tombs cut archway, Zechariah cut square way. We are talking about 500 before Jesus. Why this prophet buried on Mount of Olives? It's connected with the prophecy of Zechariah chapter 14, which says the Messiah at the end will come from heavens to Mount of Olives, and the resurrection will be from the Mount of Olives to the temple through the Golden Gate. And that's why the Jews use the whole Mount of Olives Cemetery because all waiting for the Messiah. Now, all the cave, all that you see here, man-made cave. They start cutting the cave through the hole and sitting there like digging a system of water. They come down finishing the sound spot. Then they need light space to take the rocks out. They open the main end. And then they continue digging inside. And this is years of war. Also, there are four basins, like that one, for washing the hands. Because Jews, when they bury someone, or visit the cemetery, they wash the hands after to be clean. Now, when you, we talk about the prophet Zechariah, in Jerusalem, two Zechariah, the prophet from the Old Testament, which is here, the priest, the husband of Elizabeth, or the father of Johannes, which is down in the Kidron Valley. So here the prophet Zechariah with the other two prophets. This is the last three from the Old Testament. Now, the evidence. When you talk about 2,500 years back, it's very hard to know what happened. But the Jewish is different from the Egyptian. The Egyptian believe another life starts after death. They used to provide the body with money, with food, with clothes, with everything gold, whatever. The Jews believe spiritual life after death, which means the body is like a jacket to throw it away. So, for people in the future to know what's going on here, they used to put together with the body books, names, prayers. And that's how we know today it's the tomb. Wow, 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 okay. okay. And after the Six-Day War, this is recognized by the archaeologist department, the Israeli people. By the way, we live up here. We look after them. So I remember when they came, we make coffee for them and we talk and they said they are not going to touch anything because we know it's empty. Mm -hmm. We want to make measurements and write it in the guidebooks. Well, I thank you once again. This is really, really amazing. We are in an ancient place, 2,500 years old. A lot of evidence pointing that these are the tombs of the prophets of Haggai, Malachi, and Zachariah, and then their followers. So, wow. Okay, well now we're gonna do a walking tour down in here, okay? Now, this is the first circle. Uh-huh. This is how the graves look. Okay. Each grave one meter deep from the ground level down. Uh-huh. Two meters long inside. Okay. And that's this step I mentioned at the left side, the other one broken, they are oh, okay. still there. Okay. So they lay down body body between and put slabs on top, then they cover it level with the floor. Okay. So here they bring the dead body, they make a prayer for the body, then they bury him in the top. And remember people of the Old Testament used to be shorter than today. So here we can see the height of people from there to this. Oh, okay. That's the height of a person in the old days. Okay. Up here is a room with five small 
tombs, children graves. Oh, okay, children graves, all right. Now, how it comes, children graves. The followers used to be probably men, women together, we don't know, but they have children too. So it's like a choice to put someone with his child in the prophet cemetery. And oh. this is Haggai. This is Haggai Malachi's too. You go inside. All right. Go inside. All right. And you take the photos with me. Come out also. Now, turn down. Wow. In the tomb of Haggai Malachi. Now, this is a room with two. Oh. Okay, so this one right here is Haggai. Haggai. All right. And that's Malachi, Malachi. over here. You can see what I meant. That's the step down there. The other part is not broken. Okay. So this is the two ledges. And enough space for the body to be laid down. And the stones on top, they seal it. Then they cover it level with the floor. Okay. All right. Now, here is Zechariah. This is the square cut. This is the writing on top. Zechariah, down here. Okay, right here, okay. Zechariah and Hebrew. Oh, wow. Now, what are some faith lessons that we can learn from the life of the prophets? Well, today, we are all called to be what I say, small p prophet. In other words, we're not biblical prophets who speak God's word, but we do speak God's word as it is written okay so we're not predicting the future and things like that but a prophet in the New Testament was a person who also just spoke forth God's word okay so today all of us are small p prophets we are called to speak forth accurately God's word as it is recorded we don't make up scripture but we simply just speak what has already been written and we do it accurately and if we don't then God will hold us accountable. That's why God says, let not many of you be teachers because teachers will incur a stricter judgment because they are influencing people. So today we are to know God's word and we are to speak it accurately to God's people and to non-believers as well. Also like the Old Testament prophets, our lives can be difficult as well. Sometimes people can think of us as outsiders, can maybe think we're weird, if we really are true followers of Christ, if we're bold and we share our faith, and sometimes people can label us as just being weird and different. Once again, we are called to share God's word, to share it accurately, and it doesn't matter what others think about that. What matters is what God thinks about us. So we're out to please an audience of one. We're out to please God. We're not out to please people. We have a responsibility to know God's word, so that then we can speak it accurately. Because if we don't, then we will influence others in wrong ways, and then God will hold us accountable for telling them things that aren't actually true. So we need to know God's word so we can share it accurately and truthfully. Also, we are to speak the truth with the right attitude. We are to speak the truth in love, in kindness, and also sometimes firmly, but we are to speak the truth respectfully, respecting others, but nonetheless, even though we're called to speak the truth in love, we are still called to speak the truth. We just need to speak it with the right attitude. So sometimes many people feel that because we're to speak the truth in love, that means that we're to okay and we're to approve of all sin. That's not the case whatsoever. If we really love people, we will tell them the truth about what God says about their sinful lifestyles. So we're to speak the truth in love, but we are to speak the truth. So what a great example, what a great honor to be here at the Cave of the Prophets, to be in the very spot where it's believed that Zechariah, Malachi, Haggai were buried, their disciples, they were prophets, and that they had a different message for that time. But today, once again, we are small p prophets. We're called to speak God's word as it is written.